A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sarawak Skills Industry Talk on Coaching for Leaders. I'm Stanley, your moderator for this afternoon's session. I would like to start by sharing the following housekeeping rules. If you have not done so, please scan the QR code on your screen to register your attendance. There is also a link in the chat room for you to access the attendance form. During the course of this industry talk, we will mute all microphones, except for the speakers and moderators' microphones. Please post your questions in the chat room. We will endeavor to answer all your questions during the Q&A sessions throughout the talk. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, we have a diverse online audience comprising representatives from the government various sectors of the industry, our members, as well as the management and my colleagues from across the Sarawak Skills Group of Learning Institutions. Thank you all for your tremendous support. And now I would like to invite Inchek Mohammad Isham bin Fauzi, Vice Chancellor of ICATS University College and Deputy Executive Director of Business Development at Sarawak Skills to deliver his welcoming remarks. Inche Isham, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Stanley. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, to all for this industry talk. And ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon industry talk is part and parcel of Sarawak Skill various initiatives as a stakeholder in the transformation of Sarawak economy and digital landscape. In line with our five years strategic blueprint from 2021 to 2025, Industry talks and webinars are held regularly for the benefit of our stakeholder. For your reference, in December last year, as part of our guest speaker series, we held our first industry talk title, Improving Productivity in the New Normal. This was followed by our second industry talk last month title, Agile, A New Way of Working. This afternoon, our speaker, Captain Dr. Shan Murthy, will share with us on the urgent need for leaders to wear the head of a coach. According to our speaker, a coaching culture promotes a solution-focused mindset that fosters the development of high-performance culture. Indeed, as a leaders, we need to embrace the many benefits of coaching to thrive in, the high, in a highly volatile world. Ladies and gentlemen, with the COVID-19 pandemic comes the realization that the way forward will be a voyage into uncharted, uncharted waters. Indeed, as leaders, we must prepare to wear many hats to search for opportunities during these turbulent times. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Sarawak Skill Groups of a Learning Institution, I would like to invite you to visit our website, www.ppks.edu.my. For your reference, at Sarawak Skills, we work closely with our stakeholders, namely the government and industry to produce a qualified, competent and future ready workforce through continuous learning and development. The industry plays a leading role in managing and determining the direction of Sarawak skill through its representative in the management council. That's why we would like to invite all of you or may, uh, to, uh, to be our members as well. Sarawak skill has strong support from the industry with 69 members from various industry sectors. Surely, with our fingers firmly on the pulse of uh, industry, including industry trend, we are also in the midst of developing a range of technical programs for the petrochemical industry and to support the development of hydrogen-based application and technologies. These programs are in line with the state government post-COVID-19 exit economy strategy up to 2030 do visit our website for more information about our wide range of academic and skill programs. 
as well as training programs for the public and pri private sectors. In closing, I would like to thank each one of you for joining us this afternoon. I trust you will use the key takeaways from this afternoon session to advance your strategic initiative. I look forward to your support and our future industry talks, webinar, and training. Thank you very much. Thank you, Inche Isham, for your welcoming remark and for setting the tone for this afternoon's session. Yes, we are looking forward to a fruitful session. Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce our speaker, let's take a few moments to have a group photo. I would like to invite everyone to turn on your video camera. Thank you very much. Okay, let's turn on our cameras, everyone, video camera. All right, everyone, um, I think I see most of the cameras are on, so we are getting there. All right, I will do a quick count, everyone. So put on your best smile, nice and sharp. I can see all cameras are on. I think most of them are on, all are on now. So one, two, three. All right, maybe we'll take another one. Okay. I think for those of you who have not switched on your cameras, can you uh, try to on your cameras? Okay, we are getting there. All right, here we go again. One, two, three. Thank you very much, everyone. I think we have uh, quite a number of good photos there to, for remembrance, at least for our memories. All right, let us proceed now with uh, the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, for more than a year, the COVID-19 pandemic has cast a dark shadow over the globe. This has resulted in numerous challenges for individuals, organizations, and nations. For leaders, an important challenge is the quest to prosper in turbulent times. Perhaps the all important question is, how does a leader steer his or her ship to stay the course in the face of unprecedented change? Yes, we live in challenging times. In this respect, the importance of coaching has come to the fore as one of the pillars of effective leadership. Yes, around the globe, surveys have been done that show that more and more organizations are using coaching as a tool for boosting performance. According to our speaker, coaching unleashes the potential of individuals and motivates them to strive for excellence on various fronts. On that note, I take great pleasure in introducing Captain Dr. Shan Murthy, the speaker for this afternoon's industry talk. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why is there captain and doctor in his name? For your reference, Shan is a retired army officer with an illustrious career spanning 14 years in the army. He has a doctor of philosophy in business and his research interests cover coaching, leadership and entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to share with you that Shan is an international trainer, facilitator and an executive coach. He is the CEO and founder of Team Coach International, a learning and development solutions provider that has facilitated workshops and learning sessions in many countries around the globe. Currently, Shan is also the global president for the International Association of Coaching for the 2020 and 2021 term. He is also the author of Coaching with Respect, which is available in three languages. They are English, Spanish, and Burmese. Over the past 20 years, Shan has trained facilitated and coached participants across the Asian region on various aspects of leadership, team development, and performance coaching. His innovative, interactive, and high-impact approaches 
empower his participants to experience, reflect, and act for self as well as organizational improvements. Over to you, Shan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jay uh, Sham. Thank you, Stanley, for introducing me. It's a pleasure to at least, you know, virtually be connected to Srava uh, again. Now, uh, if I could have, um, am I made the co-host yet? Uh, hopefully I've been made the co-host, yeah? So I'm gonna share my uh, screen, okay? As we go now, let us make this, uh, I know we have, we have quite a number of us, about 80 participants here, uh, I see. Let's make it as interactive as possible. Huh? Sometimes in a large group, it might seem a bit challenging, but we try uh, to make it as interactive as possible. I'm gonna share a screen and uh, sometimes uh, I also have planned to put you all into breakout rooms, just to have conversations among yourself and then come back and we will have uh, one on one, one poll that I'm gonna do here. And also we will have questions and answer sessions. Now, we don't have to wait until the end of the session to ask questions. You can always put it in the chat box and uh, Stanley, uh, the moderator for today, he will stop me and say, Sean, hold on, there's questions, yeah? So, okay, then I will answer the questions as we go on. So thank you again uh, to be participating in this uh, webinar. So I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay, we on slide share mode. Hold on, please. Let me just adjust my screen. Uh, okay, I've got that. Okay, again, this is a collaboration effort with our partners, our skills team coach, and uh, we, we are also the master's licenses for internationalization of coaching. And we are constantly inspiring coaching culture with, with a purpose and passion all over Asia. Yeah. So we would like to take away some of these outcomes. Explain what coaching as a leadership tool. People talk about coaching is only for sports, can? Let's just look at it. Yeah, let's look at it in a different perspective. Demonstrate the five, five power, coaching power tools. Inspire a solution focused mindset. Let's talk about what is solution focused mindset in a coaching conversation. Gain tools to apply this. Uh, to, to leading others. So I'm going to share with you some models and some quick uh, process to start doing. Although it's uh, just going to be a, an hour plus session, we'll take away some tools, right? There's a lot of misconception about what coaching is. Right? Now, I would like you to think about one word, yeah? I would like you to think about one word that describes the reason why leaders fail. Uh, it could be, you know, two words. Uh, if, you, if you can't say, ah, Sean, give me two words. Okay, okay, you can have two words. At least two words that describes the reasons why leaders fail. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about that word. Why leaders fail. You know, watch some of the leaders. In fact, sometimes I reflect on my own leadership failure. Yeah, nobody's perfect. Yeah, nobody's perfect. So why do leaders fail? Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to uh, launch a poll. No, that word that you chose, right? The word that you chose, you don't have to share in the chat box, you know, just think for yourself. The word you chose need to be in one of these categories. Okay, I'm going to launch poll. You see, when you talk about competency, there are three items, knowledge, skills, and attitude. Why do leaders fail? Is it because lack of knowledge, because lack of skills, or is it big lack of attitude? I would love to see, you know, eight, you know there are, uh, well, minus the, uh, minus the moderator and all, we've got about 80%, we've got 22% of, uh, who have uh, shared. Thank you, please vote, choose one.
Okay, we got 63 people who have already voted. Good. There's just one word that describes why leaders fail and choose under which category they fall under. Knowledge, skills, or attitude? Okay, is that because of knowledge leaders fail? Is it because of skills or is it because of attitude? We got 78% of you have voted. More coming in. Thank you. I'm going to uh, maybe in about 10, 15 seconds, I will stop the polling. Uh, so please uh, go in and just click one of those words. Sixty-nine. That's it. Uh, maybe the others are not able to use the poll function in their Zoom, uh, but that's all right. We got about sixty-nine people. Yeah. So I'm going to end the polling in uh, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I've end the poll, and I'm going to share the results. Uh, if you can see the results, can you put your thumbs up, please? Uh, Stanley, can you see the result? Thumbs up. Thank you. Good. So it's amazing, isn't it? Why leaders fail? Thank you, Louis. Why leaders fail is because of attitude. That's what y'all say. Yeah, that's what y'all say. So 77% of you said leaders fail because of attitude. That means knowledge the other. Skills pull to the other. So seek up is one of the main reasons. I have been doing this poll for my leadership, uh, whether it is a long-term leadership program or a short-term leadership program and coaching programs. Whenever I ask this question, not only in, in Malaysia, everywhere, and you talk about, uh, you know, from all, from very senior people, C-suit level, right until team leaders from all over, you know, not only Asians, I'm talking about Europeans, Australians, and Americans, and Europe, you know, so all this, Generally, the average I get is, they say, 65% to 75% leaders fail because of attitude. So you're not far away. Yeah, you're not far away. So, now if, pasal sikap lah, seorang pemimpin itu gagal kan? Is it, if it is, then why when we talk about leadership development program, we are focusing more on knowledge and skills? Isn't it time that we focus on the attitude part in leadership development program? Oh, Sean, attitude cannot be changed. Who said so? And how is this related to coaching? Coaching can help us to change attitude. Coaching allows us to adapt new framework, new mental framework, so that we demonstrate a change of behavior, which in turn has got an implication from attitude, right? Our attitude decides our behavior anyway, right? So, so thank you for, uh, thank you for this. Thank you for participating in the poll. Okay, I'm going to now start sharing my slides again. As you can see that, you know, when we do virtual program, I keep on talking even when I'm trying to do some work because sometimes in virtual program, kind of silence, people wondering what's happening, right? So forgive me, I'm, 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 you know, I'm not making this thing all full, full of silence. So, okay. Now, so 77%. We did the poll. This is a word, this is a phrase has been used so many times and in the current world, you can always, people talk about wuka, wuka, wuka. What is this? Volatility, volatile, uncertain. Things are very complex and things are ambiguous. Are we living in a wuka world right now? Well, as far as I'm concerned, yes. Especially in COVID, everything is changing. We do not know what's going to happen next. Tomorrow, I don't, we do not know what's going to happen. MCO car, CMCO car, and whatever terminologies that we have, right? We are not sure. Is it complex? Yes, because no, nobody really, really understands. And it's ambiguous, not clear. So I would like to, uh, I would like to share a short video 
about three minutes video, right? Three minutes video uh, about VUCA. VUCA is a terminology created by an American general during the Afghanistan Iran Iraq war. They had all these strategic plans. Yeah, they had all the strategic plans, but unfortunately, things were changing so fast, they cannot execute their plan. And this general, uh, you know, actually uh, created this phrase. Yeah. So I put the sound on, share sound. Okay. Let's see this video. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. This is the world we call VUCA. A world where non-stop unforeseen turbulence invades, where events come at us with unforgiving speed, straining organizational odds of survival. In this world, reflexes must be rapid and on target. Who will survive? Only the fittest. Who will triumph? Only the agile. In business, VUCA underscores the importance of sense-making, analytical astuteness, readiness planning, risk management and situational problem solving. For banks, insurers and asset managers, barriers are being eroded. Invaders from non-traditional industries are entering the atmosphere from different lands and vantage points. Regulation and risk is far-reaching and never before has technology become so disruptive, so exponential, so quickly. How do you lead your people through change effectively? How do you derive value from the hurdles of regulation? How do you make sure you have the most capable people? How do you set the tone at the top? How do you get your HR function to lead you through a VUCA world? How will your people make or break your expansion? And into new territories. Do you have the answers? Know what you are up against. Caution against letting your guard down. Master, don't run from change. Adopt a growth mindset. Balance execution response and agility. Choose evolution over irrelevance. Include and enable your people to contend. In the age of innovation, their thinking is your advantage. Their energy, your salvation. Identify points of triumph. Derive value from regulatory hurdles. Recruit, arm and empower your most capable people. Develop leaders that can drive the revolution and conquer new territories. The future is VUCA. Now is the future. Get ready to revolutionize. Okay, so you, you saw the video, right? And what is happening right now? We are right smack in the VUCA environment. So how do we lead people then? Is it going to be the same way that we have led people all these years? In fact, we ourselves have said, oh, you know, 50 years ago, leadership was different. Now it's different. 20 years ago, different. 30 years ago, different. Things are constantly changing. But are we changing the way we do things? The only place we talk about Leadership is probably just looking at uh, our, our leader and then, you know, we, we learn from him. And some organizations, they get promoted. People are promoted to a leadership position. But guess what? Leadership competencies are not given to them. They are promoted because of their skills and knowledge. Right? But are they being, are they being developed as leaders? And what is leadership? And what is the difference, right? So here, I'm going to share how coaching as a tool. In your leadership toolkit, if you have coaching skills in your leadership toolkit, how it can help you. So that's where we are going to uh, have a conversation around. Yeah. So again, please type in your, uh, your, your in, a, in the chat box. And if you see there's any question, Stanley will, uh, you know, stop me and then, you know, get me to answer the questions or clarify. Yeah. So let me share my slides. So in this slide, when attitude is changed, thought is changed. When thought is changed, behavior is changed. 
And when behavior is changed, action is changed. And when action is changed, then results is changed. It comes back to attitude. What is attitude? It's our belief system. Things that we are brought up with. Some of the things that we believe. And some people like saying, no, shouting at our staff is perfectly okay. You know why? Because my boss used to shout at me. Sometimes I hey, can I put you bowling file, huh? The car office. Hey, Dulu, I'm your boss for bowling file. So if there are any non Malay speaking uh, audience we have, just give me a chat so I will translate from BM to English because sometimes I use BM as well. Yeah. So, and here, the changing of the thought and what coaching, coaching helps in that reframing of your thought, reframing your belief system, reframing how you do things, how you think, first of all. And that leads to greater results. The world, Albert Einstein said this long time ago, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Again, coaching helps us to change our thinking. So what is coaching? The word coaching does not come from sports, like most of including me. 15 years ago, I thought, oh, coaching me, sports. No, it's not. There's a small town in Hungary called KOCS, Coach. And this is where they construct or make a very high quality horse carriage or horse drone transport. And some of you all will know, you know, the Coach handbag, one of the most expensive handbag as the Coach logo, right? So that's what a coach is. So what is the role of the coach? To bring you, listen carefully, please, to bring you from where you are to where you want to go. It's not telling you where you need to go. The coach will not tell you where to go or how to go. They will ask you where you want to go. So again, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sharing, please also remember that all of us here have used coaching skills. It's just that we did not know what coaching is. Yeah, what coaching is. So let us follow through the process. Again, stop me if you have any question. Coaching is not teaching. Coaching is not telling or yelling. Coaching is not therapy. Coaching is not about mentoring. Coaching is not about consulting. Teaching, you give knowledge. Telling, giving direction. Therapy, going back to your past. Mentoring, sharing experiences. Consultant, providing solution. So coaching is none of all this. Now, years ago, I was very confused. Like, all these terminologies, are the instructor, teacher, lecturer, consultant, trainer, mentor, facilitator, coach. I said, what is the difference? So I went on a journey to really finding out what are the difference each role. Now, the major differences between all these roles is how directive you want to be and how enabling you want to be. Yeah. Directive means you're providing content. Enabling means you're just using the process. No content. So as you go move towards a trainer's role, towards a coach's role, you are more enabling. Mentors do use coaching skills and tools. Facilitator is an enabling process. Coaching is an enabling process, meaning you don't tell people what to do. In our certified professional coach program, which will be soon coming to you uh, from Srawa Skills to be certified professional coaches. If you advise people what to do, if you advise people what to do, if you tell people what to do, you will fail as a coach. It's all about empowering. It's all about empowering. A uh, simple analogy. A coach will encourage and support you in driving the car. A counselor will listen to your anxieties and explore what could stop you from driving the car. A consultant will tell you how to drive the car. A mentor will share tips about driving the car. Yeah. So again, coaching is not therapy or counseling. Coaching is not mentoring. Coaching is not about giving advice. Coaching is not about providing solution. Coaching is not about telling. 
the International Association of Coaching, where I belong to, it defines coaching like this, as a transformative process for personal and professional awareness, discovery, and growth. Meaning, the process you will use as a coach will create awareness and then make you discover possible solutions to go where you want to go, then growth happens. Then growth happens. Right? So, just like a coach, right? A bus can be a coach, can uh, KTM, Keta Pitana Melayu, there's coaches. Uh, you know, it's all about if you want to go from, let's say, from uh, Kuching to Cebu, first of all, to be aware where you are right now. I'm in Kuching, exactly where to pick you up from Sarawak skills. Okay. Then discover you want to go to Cebu, fine. Which road you want to take? There are so many ways to go to Cebu, right? So you can have uh, transit somewhere and all that. So finding all the solution and then getting the person, the coachee, yeah? Co coach, coachee, just like mentor, mentee, the coach and the coachee uh, will, will discover, the coachee then will decide which road you want to take and then they move, they grow, they go to Cebu. So this is a, a simple way to explain what the coach's role is, just to bring, bring you where you are. We have got the vehicle which is actually the coaching process to bring you where you want to go. So coaching is forward-looking, goal-oriented, to help individuals define desired outcomes, create awareness of the options, uh, of, the, of the option open, help them take responsibility. One of the things about coaching is that they take responsibility and accountability in what you're doing. We don't have to give them the answers all the time. Yeah. These are some of the benefits of coaching. Performing at high level, deliver better results, lead and manage change, acquire leadership to, to motivate and inspire team members and others. Later, I will share with you in the WUKA world, how do you lead people in the WUKA world and how coaching can help. Develop, nurture healthy, robust, effective relationships, setting goals, monitor progress, managing career options and transition. That's for the coach, the coachee. Increase in skill level, access to detailed knowledge, individual attention in terms of learning and development, career path progression, retention of key knowledge and skill. So in a coaching relationship, if you are a leader who uses coaching skills, you will improve as well, not only the coachee, you and certain uh, uh, methods, yeah, certain methods or approaches when we want to develop people, only the participant or the person will improve. Nothing about you. But here, both parties benefit from a coaching relationship. This is my coaching research institute. This was uh, quite an old uh, research. Challenging new methods. Clarifying goals, enhancing self-awareness, accepting feedback, clarifying vision, 93%, getting clarity of what we want to do, of the goal, vision, curve, mission, curve, yeah, including KPI. Some people don't even know what, what the KPI means. You know, it's all paper, but how do we clarify that? Coaching helps. This is the recent research, uh, 2019, yeah, 2019. Uh, by Grace, it's, I mean, uh, now it has been published. Uh, uh, it is in the midst of it published. Yeah, she presented this in an international conference. This was a master's project where she did a research on our coaching program, uh, on our certified professional coach program, and this is what are the results. Because a lot of time we got a lot of statistics, a lot of statistics from all over the world. Tapi orang sering tanya kan. Hey, Malaysia tak ada figure ke? Only overseas, overseas, overseas. I say, yeah, because not, we are not uh, capturing enough data. So we, Team Coach International, and uh, later with Rawat Skills, we want to be a depository of coaching research. Yeah, We are currently doing for, for the nation. And uh, God willing, with Rawat Skills, we can do a lot of research in uh, Sarawak itself. Yeah? So, Look at this. 
client achievement. That means the person who's receiving coaching, self improvement, empowered, confident, solving problems, gaining solution, discover option, goals clarified, goal achieved. Kalau goals not clarified, macam mana nak achieve goal? Sometimes they tell you, uh, boss, I think I want to be a better team leader lah, boss. Uh, okay, okay, very good, very good, very good. Tetapi bila dia tanya balik, kan kalau tanya balik, what is effective team leader? Effective lah, boss. So it's not clear. If we don't have our goal or a clear picture of our goal in our mental screen, if we can see the picture, I don't think we can achieve it. And this is where coaching helps. Client achievement, clarity, being more solution focused, comfortable, satisfied, triggering thoughts, think and reflect, think and reflect. Benefits to the coach. That means the person who is coaching can imagine not only the coachee benefits, the coach benefits as well from Grace's research. Understanding coaching, personal transformation, self-discovery, role as a coach, mastery, tools and techniques. Yeah, they learn that. They experience that. They improve on that. This is, uh, we created a coaching culture in an organization, in a multinational organization. It was, it was a global headquarters, a tech global headquarters in Cyberjaya. And we did the program and uh, some of the feedback from the coaches this is an internal program, creating a whole culture in the organization. You see, personal, impact on personal, individually, better for me as a person, my skills improve and it has an impact on the business. These are person who receive coaching. Yeah? And the coaches, the senior management who were the coaches, right? They, they were coaching. Impact on business, skills and personal again. Although they were coaching others, personally they also had an impact. That was a difference. This is from, uh, used to be known as American Society of Training and Development. Those in training might know the name. Uh, now, look at the research done here. 575 learning leaders completed the survey. The manager as a coach listens, asks, gives. 43% use peer coaching, use coaching as a discipline to build performance competency for all managers, use in the, in the moment coaching. And the benefits are improved communication, raises engagement, improved skills, personal transfer, uh, personal trans, uh, skills to personal transfer, simulates productivity. This is a 2020 research, global coaching study. Do the organization expect people to be certified and credentialed? Yes, those days, no. Those days, whoever can become a coach. But now people, are, because the word coach, they, people like to use like, I'm a coach, I'm a this coach, I'm a that coach, I'm a this coach. By coaching is coaching. Eh? The different types of coaching is just for branding only. Branding purposes only, right? So people want to get, want to know where are you, where did you study your coaching from? Yeah. Why do coaching work? You see, whenever we want to have behavioral change, learning must happen, right? Learning must happen before we have behavioral change. So these are some of the learning theories, especially adult learning theories. They support coaching. Andragogy, those who are in the learning R and L and D field might know, yeah? Coaching. What motivated adult learning? Transformative learning theory, great new ideas through interpreting and reflecting. Experiential learning theory, experience, reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. Years ago, these were learning theories. And coaching, when we look at it, is supported by all these th three learning research, empirical research theory. No wonder coaching works. It's not just plucked from the sky and say, I'm a coach. No, there's a process to it. So why coaching? Why now? Because it's enabling and support. Employee engagement happens. Culture of inclusiveness. Build trust and respect. Later I'll show you a trust formula and why it applies to coaching. Shift in perception. And it is evidence-based practice. You've already seen all the evidence. Before I go to... Uh, 
uh, Vuka, right? I just stop here for a while. Uh, what I want to do is, I want to break you all up into breakout rooms. I'm going to spend about maybe uh, 10 minutes there and then discuss, you know, discuss with each other. What have I actually heard so far? Is there any questions? And later when we come back, we will have, uh, you know, I will check with Stanley if there's any question. Uh, you can also type in and then uh, we'll answer some of the questions. This is like the uh, midway in the process of the presentation. But we need you to have a short discussion among yourself, okay? So I'm going to uh, create... Uh, can we have the breakout rooms? It's not been started yet. Uh, can I have the tech technical people to add the breakout room? We already got one breakout room. Uh, we need more than that. I can create the breakout room. Technical? When I look at the breakout room, it says not started yet. Um, Now, can we have more rooms? Okay. Let me try this. Yeah, let me try this. I'm adding more rooms. We got 16. Okay. Hmm. I'm sorry, it's not working, so don't worry about it. So, Stanley, do you got any questions, Stanley? Uh, yes, uh, Shan, I think we have, uh, we can see through the Zoom chat that a couple of questions have come in. Number one, I just read it out. He says, yep. can we have the material after the session? <laughs> after the session. Oh, okay. Why not? Okay. What we will do is, uh, so what skills will send you the material for all those who have registered. So make sure that you have registered with the right email address. Uh, what we will do is we'll PDF it. Yeah, we'll PDF it. And then you can share, uh, you know. Uh, we will send you, definitely. Definitely, we will send it to you. And I always say this, yeah? I always say this. You got the word copyright there. Okay? And what it means is, you got the right to copy. <laughs> Use it, share it with your team members. Okay? And that's how we spread knowledge, yeah? Tak perlulah kedeko ilmu, kan? Ilmu ni perlu di share kepada semua orang. So, you can share what you have heard. Um, you know what you have heard, and then just share some some basic stuff, yeah, some basic stuff. Great, Stanley. There you go. Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you, Shan. I think there's another question in the room. There, I, I can also see it here. It says, uh, I think uh, about coaching the what the leader. Does it need somebody with skill and knowledge besides attitude? Okay, attitude is the way of being. To start being a coach, you need the knowledge. You need to, the knowledge that to be applied, then you get the skill. You practice, you get better at the skill. And this is where uh, Sarawak Skill and Us, we are, we are coming up with this uh, program to give you the knowledge and skills. Knowledge and skill boleh dibagi, tapi attitude ni kena sendiri lah. But we can share with you the way of being a coach. And entirely up to you. You have the choice. Stanley, is that okay? All right. I think, yeah, that sums it up. So we can look forward to future sessions. On coaching. Yeah. Uh, would you have time for maybe one more question, Shan? Would you have time? Yeah. Yes, we can. All right, all right. Um, we are because now we are the questions are coming in. So I'll just read up one of the questions here. It says, This is regarding we are looking forward to the post-pandemic era, and many countries are looking forward to a golden age of abundance. 
What mm. role will leaders and coaches play in this new age? Amazing. Fantastic question. First of all, the word abundance. Yeah. We need to live a life. I'm sorry. This is my personal opinion. Okay. I'm not imposing anything. We need to have a mindset of abundance. Not a mindset of lack. And not constantly focusing on what we don't have. Focus on what we have. And during the COVID, I mean, especially last year, again, uh, I have been talking to a lot of associations that invite me to talk to, hey, how, how was that? Any business are down, la, cannot do anything, la, COVID, la, that, la, this, fine. Accept it. Accept the fact it's down. No point talking about, uh, you know, keep on complaining, complaining, and then they want to know more about where COVID has come from, who actually, is it a biological warfare? Is it that? Is it that? Tapurula. Go deep into that, God. And then accept, okay, good, that we are in this position right now. Awareness, God. awareness, discovery, and uh, uh, awareness, discovery, and growth. God. So at the awareness level, accept. So when a leader practices coaching, God, what happens is that he or she will be very inclusive. They will mind the wisdom of the group. Because each one of us have got, definitely has got some knowledge, some skill that can contribute towards post-pandemic. So coaching how it happens, leaders become more facilitators or practice facilitative leadership rather than directive leadership. Because I tell leaders, come on lah, you pun tak tahu. Kalau banjir, taufan, maybe we have experience lah, heavy rain and all that. Tapi COVID-19 ni kita tak pernah experience. As a leader, kita pun tak tahu what to do, right? But what we can do as a team, the wisdom of the group is very powerful, ladies and gentlemen. And as leaders, as coaches, we facilitate conversations so that we get the best out of the team to move forward. Again, with the mindset of abundance, not with the mindset of lack. Stanley? Okay, yes, mindset of abundance. Yeah, I think I've learned something new as well out of this. Instead of uh, focusing on the negative side of things, I think we can be more hopeful and positive, right? That's right, yes, yes, yes. That's very good. Yeah, because now the questions uh, seem to be coming in. Maybe we just take one more before you continue. Uh, will that be okay? All right. Uh, this thing is about change. I just read out the question. It is said that change is difficult in itself as it leads to an uncertain future. How will coaching facilitate changes in an organization? You know, taking into considera uh, consideration that people don't want to change or are reluctant to change. Another great question. Remember, let me give you a short acronym. Sarah, a lady's name, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H. Whenever change happens, everybody goes through this process. S stands for shock. A stands for anger. Apa nak ubah ubah? Why you want to change? Everything was working fine. Apa pula pandai pandai nak tukar ubah? Marah tu. And then they go into R, resistance to change. Because they are fearful. Change creates fear. Because we have been in comfort zone all the time. So whenever new change comes in, we are fearful. Right? And then, we go to A, accept. Only when we accept, the last letter is H, hope. Then we got hope. That is Sarah. Shock. Yeah? Shock. Anger. Resistance. Accept. Hope. Coming to learning uh, zones, from comfort zone, if you want to grow, you need to come out from your comfort zone and go into the fear zone. In the fear zone, that's why orang, ramai orang takut change lah. Sebab apa? You punya skill mungkin tak boleh pakai lagi dah. You punya knowledge pun dah tak boleh pakai lagi dah. I heard, you know, a few years time, there'll be 600 of our jobs. Tak, we have not even heard now. New jobs will be created. Our skill lah macam mana? So that's why we are fearful. Then we go step into the learning zone. And from learning zone, then we grow. Now, coaching will help us to come out from the coach, uh, from the comfort zone, navigate through the fear zone, we learn new things and we grow. 
So, and and remember, movement does not mean progress. Huh? That means we are doing so many activities and it doesn't mean progress. I call it the syndrome of the rocking chair. Again, rocking chair, so much of rocking, not moving forward. So activities and movement does not mean progress. We might have a lot of movement in the comfort zone, but might not be progressing. We must come out, go into the fear zone. And as leaders, remember, include everyone. Include everyone in the process of change. People need to know what's in for me for the change. If not, change up. Okay, sir. All right, all right. Yes, you need to be more inclusive, right? You know, so that people will not uh, feel or be left out in that process. Excellent. So we have covered, uh, covered a few questions already. So maybe I'll, there, there are more. I think we have uh, quite a few more coming. Maybe we'll uh, wait for uh, a little later in this session to ask you questions. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay, so uh, permission to move forward, yeah? Permission yeah. to move forward. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. And here we go. So we talked about why coaching, why now? Then we talked about Woka. Buka, kan? Buka ni, this is the current situation lah. Kalau nak saja, how to experience Woka? Now we are experiencing Woka. Things are volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguity. All right? So, John Merz, one of the thought thinkers in leadership, he said, during volatility, you must, as a leader, you must be reliable. And uncertainty time, you must be trustworthy. Complex. In a complex situation, you must be direct. Tak payah cakap bunga-bunga. Direct. And ambiguity. When things are fuzzy, not clear, make sure be understandable. Use simple language so that people can understand. What's that got to do with coaching? When I looked at it and I mapped it and I said, wow, what a wonderful way to introduce coaching. Coaching is definitely a tool for leaders in this WUKA environment. Coaching promotes responsibility and accountability. Coaching promotes trust and respect. Coaching allows for honest and direct feedback. Coaching provides clarity. There you go. This way you can use coaching. And it's very much related to the questions you, you came up with late, earlier, which is about change. You kalau tak berubah sebagai satu individu ataupun personally ataupun as a, as a team, you will not go anywhere. A lot of frustration will take place because you're not moving forward. So, again, let me share again. All of us have created, I mean, have gone through coaching. We have, we know how to go. We have done coaching. It's just that what I've done is put in the right perspective. These are coaching tools. These are simple coaching tools for all of us, yeah? If you did not take back anything, at least this part. Questioning. We must continuously ask open-ended question, not closed-ended question when we are doing a coaching conversation. What does this mean? Don't ask question, ah, dah buat ke belum? Kenapa lambat? All one-word answers. When you ask soalan-soalan terbuka ataupun open-ended question, you make people think. You make people think and you explore more. You clarify, make them clarify more. So can you please tell me what are the factors that is influencing your growth in this sector? People think. And if possible, Laya, if possible, do not use the why questions a lot. Because we are so used to ask the why question. Why this? Why that? Why this? See, the minute you ask why question, especially if you're a leader, the people that you serve to lead, yeah? I'm a great believer of servant leadership, by the way, okay? The people that you serve to lead, what happens is that they will be fearful. But boss, ma, leader, tanya again. Why? Alamak, takut. Initially, they will give you reasons. Okay. When then run out of reasons, they start giving you excuses. Okay, lagi lah. Now the dangerous part. When they run out of excuses, they will start lying to you. They will tell you what you like to listen. Because they're takut, ma. 
So what are we doing in teams and organization? We are constantly creating creative liars, are we? So I'm not saying total band of why question, but try not to. For example, why are you late? Later, we'll talk about solution-focused thinking as well. Why are you late? Why do you want to know why that person is late? What do you want? You want the person to come to work early. So ask them, what can you do to come to work early? Simple as that. Kalau why are you late? Dekat Kuala Lumpur, 40 tahun, excuse the traffic jam. No. No traffic pun, traffic jam. Right? So this is why, be careful of that. Yeah? Questioning, very important. Listening. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. An example, earlier days, like earlier days when, when somebody, my staff was talking to me about something, uh, you know, Sean, we need to do this. In my mind, I'm not listening. You know what I'm thinking? Aku cakap lah dulu, aku tahu lah macam mana nak jawab kau. We are not listening. We are listening to reply. We are not listening to understand. That is level one listening. Level two listening, you're paying attention to the words. And level three listening, you're also listening to what has not been said. Beautiful Chinese character. This is old Chinese character for listening. It pronounced as ting. Some of y'all might know this. Can you imagine how beautifully this is? I took out from the book, The Tao of Coaching. Yeah. You listen with your ears as if you're listening to the king. You know, can you imagine if you're listening to a king, how attentive you will be? And you are focusing with maximum focus. But like as if you got 10 eyes. Focus on one direction and you're listening from your heart. Beautifully described in one character for listening, this Chinese character. Then you need to clarify. Reflecting means whenever that person is saying, go back, just like a mirror, reflect it back to them. Because sometimes people talk before they think. So when you reflect back, hey, did I say that? But told guy, tell you that. Yeah, hala. Oh, yeah, no, 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 that's not what I mean. And sometimes summarizing. Some people will talk and talk and talk will stop. And some people will not talk at all, right? But these are the people who are all prasalunya, pramala, and all those extrovert. They will be talking and talking. So summarize. Get them to summarize. So thank you very much for sharing with me this story. What are the main important points? Paraphrasing. Saying the, I mean, saying what whatever the person has said to you, paraphrasing it, meaning saying back to the person with different words, but meaning the same thing. Yeah. For example, I give you a reflecting uh, story. The coach or the person tells or my staff tells me, you know, um, last week I visited the uh, project uh, and we had all the subcontractors were working very well. So when I reflect, oh, so last week you, you went to the project area and all the subcontractors are working very well. That is reflecting straight away. Summarizing, the person says, oh, last week, you know, I was there on the way I stopped by, you know, my family house and then went to the contract construction place. I saw the vendor, I had coffee with them, I had tea with them and, uh, you know, talking to them about work and all that, da, 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 da. They were all doing work. So I summarized. So you mean you, last week you went there and they're all doing their work, sub subcontractors. Yes, summarizing, paraphrasing. Last week I went to the construction site and all the con contractors were working very well. So I'm happy to know that all the contractors are, uh, you know, are doing their job. Different word meaning the same thing. Now, why do you want to do this? Because sometimes people talk without thinking. Some people think, 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 don't talk. All right, and that's why questions are important. So when we do this, the person will really, really feel that you're actually listening to them. And they're able to clarify what they really mean. Because I still feel that there's no enough words like in any language can to express exactly what I feel. So this is the giving the opportunity for them to express. Uh, I will give you these notes, yeah? I will give you these notes not to uh, worry so much, yeah? I will give you these notes. Silence. Those who don't understand your silence will not understand your words. Respect silence. Sometimes we ask the person, uh, what about the uh, project last week? The person is thinking. You know, do you understand what I'm going to ask you? What happened to the project last week? Still thinking. Uh, can you update me? And you keep on asking questions. Relax. Like, I want to sit down. 
people need to think, especially introverts, give them chance to reflect, especially when you ask deep question. Can you tell me what are the factors that actually made that project possible and finish the project on time and before time, in fact? Reflect. Can you please tell me what are the, uh, what kind of relationship that we need to build with the local community so that we can carry out certain Jiva Murni projects for them? They need to think. They need to reflect. So don't want to stack the question. Sampai dia, dia pun, banyak sangat soalan ni. Just jawab aja lah. Make you happy. There you go. Validating and complimenting. Now, this is another important uh, stuff. That means when you are as a leader, you need to catch what they are doing well. For example, uh, boss, last week I went in, visited the project site and you know, and the and the contractors were doing very well. Oh, okay, then okay, saja. So I will say, you know, oh John, I think you're doing a great job. Tell me what what did you do to make the contractors work very well? Tell me. Oh, people will feel good, ma. Sometimes leaders, kita ni, we just want to talk about all the mistakes and all the wrongs and all the failures. When they do good, we don't talk about it. We only think about negatives. I'm like, well, you know, that's something that research also shows, right? We, there are 60,000 thoughts in our mind and 80% is negative, a normal human being. That's why we pay attention to more problems and negatives than positives. So in coaching, you as a leader, as a coach, when you pick up coaching, you will constantly use these five tools. Questioning, powerful questioning, listening attentively. Three, practice your silence. Yeah, practice your silence. Four, you validate, you compliment. And five, you clarify. You clarify by summarizing, reflecting. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry. Summarizing, re reflecting, and paraphrasing. When people feel that they are heard, you are actually providing psychological safety for the people that you serve to lead. And what does that mean? Psychological safety. That means they feel safe in expressing what they feel. So when we get that, when they can express what they feel, they will tell you the truth. And what you, when, when we say through truth, for me that your team and your organization, you know, constantly is thriving on truth. Sometimes truth hurts, but it's important. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I talk about organization and team and leadership, please remember, we are also leaders in our own family as fathers, as mothers, as sisters and brothers in our family, in our community, and then at the workplace, and then our nation. So all this, I've done so much, pro pro so many programs for parents as you know, parents as leaders, educators as leaders. So this can be used everywhere. In fact, let me share with you, two years ago, we have done, I've done a three month certification program for the blind community, visually impaired, for the deaf community. And this year we are doing another two more CSR project for the blind and the deaf. Yeah, so we can even, I was, even talking to, I mean, sharing this, uh, coaching can be also taught. You know, we were uh, we were talking to some groups who who can't even read and write. We were sharing them coaching tools. Parents, especially when your kids are teenage, coaching is the best tool. Best tool. I've used that to improve my conversation with my children. Askar, not only me, Aska. My father also in the army. My family, a lot of army people. Can you imagine the kind of way we talk and, you know, order? <laughs> but guess what? I had a very bad relationship with the kids. And until I picked up coaching, I was blessed. 
And I say, God, thank you for such a wonderful tool in my life. Now I've got better relationship, not only with my kid, even with my spouse. I had, you know, husband and wife who were in my program telling me about how much their uh, spouse relationship has improved. You know why? They're constantly respecting each other. Before I go to the next one, Stanley, uh, if I could, uh, you know, stop and see whether there's any questions. Yes, uh, Sean, yes, we have uh, more questions coming here. Uh, this is from someone from the HR side of things. It says, for some, I, I just read out the question, I think it will be easier. For mm. some, coaching is viewed negatively or it has been placed under a negative light, meaning that coaching is for underperformers and those under a performance improvement plan. That's why they need coaching. It, can you share some positive aspects of coaching instead of merely being for underperformers? Yeah, Sorry, it's a bit long, the question. I no problem, Stanley. Got it, I got it. You see, there are two things here. One is, another word people really, really hate to hear is counselling. You go for counselling? Hey, what's wrong with me? My counselling is a great helping tool. Now, if you see my slide earlier, I did not include counselling from the teacher, trainer, personal skeleton, and sampai a coach and facilitator, facilitator, I did not include counseling because counseling is not part of all this. Counseling is more therapy work. So when do people need counseling? When your emotions, when your emotions is interrupting, disrupting your routine. What is routine? Your makan minum, selera makan, your tido, and your work continuously for 14 days, then that's a case for counseling. And that is therapy side. I will not touch. I'm not qualified to talk about counseling, right? So uh, even in Malaysia, if you want to counsel, you must be registered under Perbadana Counseling Malaysia. So I tell my coaches, all those who I've trained, hey, please don't go and counsel people huh? because you are not trained. You are not qualified to counsel. Now, coming back to HR, even PIP, Performance Improved Plan, niat dia untuk bantu you to be better in performance. Again, the way sometimes we treat it as a punishment. Oh, the minute you go to PIP, you're useless. For all you know, you touch your code skills or, or knowledge to do the work you have to do. So when you put in a PIP, meaning we are going to help you move forward. Again, the word coaching. Macam auditing lah. Auditor datang kan. Ah, oh, you go to check, cari salah orang. But auditing is a process where it's going to help us to ensure that we are running the organization very well. So again, our mindset lah. So when you talk about uh, in HR perspective, coaching, coaching is not cheap. Coaching, if you want to send somebody to be coached, you pay a few hundred dollars. In my case, you pay me a few thousand for one hour. For coaching, coaching is expensive. And that's why coaching is limited to, uh, you know, the top management or talent. Jago, Kampong, Tadde Coach. International people only international standard, but other coach. So I think here is the mindset of what coaching actually is. Again, I had a conversation. I was doing a program, and this guy is uh, in the Global Olympic Council, and he told me, "Oh, coaching, you know, you must tell in sports. We tell you this. We tell you. We tell you. We tell you what to do. How can you say you cannot tell in coaching or cannot advise?" I said, "That's not the role of the coach. Maybe trainer. Or what do you mean?" I gave an example. Lionel Messi, for example, the footballer. Do you think if he misses a penalty, do you think the coach will tell him how to kick the ball? I don't think so. He probably asked the question, hmm, what do you think you could have done better? So when, when Lionel, Lionel Messi was three years old, four years old, five years old, he would have had an instructor or a trainer teaching him football. As we go on, all these professionals, they have got coaches. They empower their thoughts. They empower their thinking. Not to teach ABC again, no. So coaching is a very expensive thing. When, uh, But of course, the ROI is fantastic. Research shows us three to 400% return on investment if you want to measure the, the return on investment ROI. So yes, there is a stigma on coaching. Oh, if I need the coaches, that means I, I'm a bad person. No. 
treat him macam ni lah. You are a product. When I coach you, I make you a better product. If you want to think like that lah. So it's again mindset whether you want to improve or not. So sometimes people are not coachable. That means they don't want to be coached. They don't want to improve. Alah, setakat buah ni cukup lah. Cari makan cukup lah. They don't want to improve. Then they don't want to be in the talent pool. That's fine. We don't have to be stressed out. So you stay there lah. Jangan complain lah bila orang lain get promoted. Because they have spent time improving their skills knowledge or improving their competencies. So always we say that people who don't want a coach, coach again, tapi people who are not coachable, that means Ah, yeah, tak apalah, tak mau lah, tak mau lah. Tak mau. Ah, this is what we call not kochi but kwachi. Kwachi <laughs> means don't waste your time. Because you as a leader, you got a lot of people to take care of. Oh yeah, tak mau improve, biarlah dia happy in their comfort zone. Biarlah. But we focus on the talent. And there are a lot of talent. Remember, as leaders, your time is precious. Okay? So, slowly but surely, We have now, uh, I myself, we have now, uh, even the Institute of Pentabel and Awam, we have made them the center of coaching excellence for the federal government. Uh, in fact, uh, I've done talks, even in Sarawak, yeah? I've done talks in the University of Malaysia, uh, University of Science, uh, sorry, University of Sarawak. And then we have spoken to educators. I'm invited again to Putrajaya to talk to the directors and uh, over the DG of Ministry of Education about coaching. I've been you know, constantly talking to, even not in Malaysia, this morning, this morning, early morning, I had a conversation with the Internationalization of Coaching Chapter Mexico. We are spreading this word because coaching is new. It's coming up. In Malaysia, it has not even started to grow yet. But people are beginning to find out about coaching. Stanley? Okay. I, I think I, I'll continue with some questions here because uh, the time now is about 3.30 almost. So, uh, okay. Someone put, uh, someone put this in inverted commas. Some say that identifying failure and telling people how to correct it will hmm. never produce great performance. In this respect, what role would coaching play to boost performance? Okay. Depending on the situation, if that is not for coaching, you just direct on it. Direct what? Because coaching doesn't mean everything is all nice. Leaders as coaches means... Uh, Once you are coaching, doesn't mean that you're all nice. You have to bring them out of the comfort zone, right? And sometimes certain things, when they don't have knowledge, uh, when they don't have enough knowledge or skills, uh, because of the uh, uh, of the failure, when you identify the failure, maybe coaching is not the case. You need to train them. Then it's not coaching intervention. It's training intervention, instructing intervention, consulting intervention. Yeah. So let's take failure. Identify the failure, but don't go so deep into the failure. Maybe you can say, okay, why this failure? Uh, not say, uh, uh, why failure? Okay, done. Finish. Understand it. Don't have to go deep and find out the root cause. What we want to do? What we want to improve? Because the failure could have happened because of certain factors. Okay, now the factors are no longer there. So why focus on the failure? What lessons can we learn and move forward? Move forward. So. You know, coaching is a very enabling process. And that's why we, we help them to discover their own solutions for greater performance. We need to remember that, you know, they need to be accountable. We need to make them accountable for their own actions. So taking failure, identifying failure, good, great. What are the things that we can learn? Respect the failure, always respect the failure. And then move forward using coaching process. Did I make sense, Stanley? Yes, yes. I think that that shows the way that because nowadays we're talking about uh, different generations. I think the perceptions on on uh, receiving of instructions would be quite different, right? In in this day and age, I think that's very good. Uh, would you like to continue, or because the, we have more questions coming in now, uh, would you want to take more questions at this time? Maybe one more. One more, okay. It says um, to maximize efficiency and productivity, there is a need to promote horizontal teamwork in an organization. How does coaching facilitate this? Okay, number one. Horizontal. Yeah. Uh, okay, what I understand by horizontal uh, team, meaning less hierarchical or even for the purpose of 
you know, uh, they, they are very uh, constantly communicating, less hierarchical, less red tape. What coaching does is, when once we, when leaders are practicing coaching, indirectly leaders are creating coaching culture in the organization. Mm. When we are creating coaching, what is the what is the outcome of coaching culture? I, I presented this uh, coaching culture thing in uh, Barcelona conference, uh, coaching conference as well. And uh, one of the thing is transparency. People gain more clarity. People trust each other more. Once we trust each other more, we respect each other more. And uh, we are creating an, an, an environment which is inclusive. We are empowering mm -hmm. people. And we are creating psychological safety. Earlier, you talked about generations, right? Now, we need to understand. We need to understand that just because we've got 30 years experience, 40 years experience, 20 years experience, do not discount, discount the young leaders. Do not discount the younger generation. Accept the fact that there are some things that they know, we might not know. Earlier, in maybe agricultural area, where did the leaders get the power from? The source of power was from knowledge. Tapi sekarang, knowledge is everywhere. And the younger ones might know more knowledge than us. We got to accept the fact. I'm talking for myself, lah, my generation. Can. We got to accept the fact, but through coaching, we facilitate conversation, empower them. And I tell you, in Malaysia, we have our youth. I got so much of respect for our youth, the future leaders. I'm confident of our nation because I see the kind of... I've, I've, I've been invited to meet youths and, you know, done things with them. And, and they're great people. And, and guess what? Once we empower them and give them the freedom to choose, what we can do as senior leaders, we got the, we are the custodian of the value system, we are the custodian of the policy, you know, the framework. Within that, let them go. Let go. We must have the courage to let go and to be led sometimes by the team. Not all the time we lead, we pull now. Stanley? Okay, uh, I think just maybe we'll just take the question in the box here. It says, do you think people will be accepted, will accept coaching if they are crystal clear, probably on the remuneration? Like what's in it for me, probably? <laughs> I mean, for coaching, you mean? Or yeah. For coach or coachee? I don't know. I think I think maybe coachee, uh, I think. Huh? Uh, coaches, are you know? able to see the question in the inbox, by any chance? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to... Do you think people will be accepting for coaching if they are crystal clear on the remuneration? Oh, I think this is more for coaches. Okay, coaches. Eh? Okay. Why should I become a coach? All right, now, if you are in organization, we have also created internal coaches in organization, right? So, it depends how the organization wants to reward them. Only talents, only talents, future leaders are, you know, are given the opportunity to coach. But if you want to pick up, be a certified professional coach, right? And then you want to do your own coaching. Guess what? Currently in Malaysia, the, the one hour or one session, we call it can one session, it can be 45 minutes to about 90 minutes. Coaches charge about maybe above 800, 800, yeah, 800 and above. Uh, international standards right now could be about 2005 to 2008 per session for coaching. Ringgits, lah, ringgits, yeah. Uh, ringgits. So that is the range. So, yeah, why not? Memang, we, after this, bila Sarawak, Sarawak Skill buat program certified professional coach, come and join us. Then you can be a certified professional coach. Yeah? So maybe I, I hope I answered that question, if that is what the coach was asking. Yeah? Thank you. Okay. So, uh, members of the audience, in case uh, if we have not answered your question, uh, please uh, contact us in the chat room. We'll be happy to elaborate. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, over, you, over to you, Shan. Okay, thank you. Let me uh, share. Okay. Okay, validating and complementing. This is a simple model, uh, grow model. Very famous model used by a lot of international companies. I was doing, you know, as a behavioral faculty coach, you know, we are doing program in China, Beijing, Singapore, the year in Malaysia, you know, these are the areas, and of course, in India as well. This model, simple, powerful, used everywhere. Used everywhere, yeah? So, it simply says this. The GROW model. 
Goal. You need to clarify the goal. Reality. Okay, you want to go and achieve the goal. What's happening right now? Okay, I want to be a better leader. Okay, fine. What do you mean by better leader? We must clarify the goal. Which told. And of course, you all know the uh, acronym for goal, kind of smart, specific, measurable, realistic, achievable, time bound. So your goal must be clear. For example, uh, oh, I'm from uh, Cebu. I want to go to Kuching. I'm the coach, lah. Bawa coach, driver, eh? coach, driver. Okay, good. Can I go and pick you up? Of course not. Kuching kat mana? Ah, very clear. Must be specific. Okay, go and drop me off at Sarawak Skills. Main gate. Ah, clear lah tu. Still clear? No. By when you want to be there? What time you need to be there? So that I can plan, kan? And then I got to ask, okay, fine. I know where you want to go. But where are you right now for me to pick you up? Ah, that is reality. Oh, I am in Cebu. I am in this hotel. Pick me up in the lobby. Then, okay, so which road you want to take to go to Kuching? Oh, I want to see the countryside, singgah di kampung ni, singgah dekat sini, singgah dekat sana. Oh, I want to go straight, maybe use the highway, wherever there is a highway. That is option. What are the possible ways to get there? And way forward, what needs to be done? Action plan. So, as you can see down there, kan? coaching is a transformative process for personal and professional awareness, discovery, and growth. This is from the International Association of Coaching. You need to be aware, you discover where you want to go, and go. And that's what, when you talk about goal, you're aware of your goal. Awareness of your goal. Reality, you're aware where you are right now in, in, with respect to the goal that you want to achieve. Discover, option is discovery. And of course, way forward is to take your plan, move forward. Lah, yeah? uh, I don't want to go uh, very deep into this. Uh, what you need to do, basically what you want to achieve. Yeah, Make the goal smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound. Reality. Ask them, what's happening right now? Where are you right now? Okay. I want to be a better team leader. Okay, what do you mean by better team leader? I should be able to delegate better, empower people better, inspire people better. Okay, if that's what you want to do, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 means that's where you want to be. Where are you right now? Oh, I'm at 5. Okay, good. To move from 5, what are the options we have? List as many, like brainstorming. Lah. List as many options possible, and then kita prioritize which solution or options we want to take forward. And then the way forward. Way forward action planning means the clarity. What you want to do, where you want to do, who you want to talk, what is the timeline, what support you need. That is way forward. Okay? So, uh, if anybody, what's the time we have? 3.38. Anybody here who wants to experience life coaching, I will coach you right now. If you got a real goal, small goal, yeah, at least everybody can see me coaching lah, live. Anybody wants to volunteer? If you want to volunteer, you just have to you know, turn on your microphone and say that I want to volunteer. 10 seconds. This is free. If not, my coaching piece is very high. At least you all can see live coaching session in action. 10 seconds. Ah, I think there's no one volunteering. Uh, I will continue to, uh, to, to share. Yeah. Um, maybe very shy. Got orang Sarawak very shy. Ka? Cik Isham. <laughs> yeah. so anyway, no worries. No worries. So I thought I wanted to demonstrate if you wanted to see me demonstrate coaching session. Okay. Tak apa. Um, we will uh, move forward. Yeah. We will move forward. Uh, so normally I do whether it's virtual or even in a conference I will always always do live coaching because easier you can see the thing in action but it's okay it's okay you go to you even YouTube you type coaching videos there are a lot of coaching videos you can see yeah 
Change versus transformation. In coaching, what happens? It's only change happens. Transformation happens. No, when we want to change, our reference point is what? The past. Oh, last time I was like this. Now I want to change. But the possibility of going back to the past is there. Tapi when you talk about transformation is the reference point is the future. I'm not worried about what, what is behind me. What is there? What is the past? Is what you want to be. Yeah, what you want to be. And and I like my friend, you know, who's in Kuching. In fact, it's, it's because of him I got uh, in touch with Sarawak Skill, uh, which is Captain Anwar. And he always talks about this. He always talks about, he's into education, right? When he goes and talks to people in organization, he talks about, doesn't matter whether you fail your SPM, ka, you pass, ka, brapa, ka. no, 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 no. Forget about the past. Look at the future. And, and yes, he has made a change. He had created difference in people's life by constantly getting them to focus on the future, not the past, including me. My son, don't look at SPM, MCE, lebih kurang. You know, but last time was last time. Lah. But what's the future? So I continue to educate myself uh, to, to do lifelong learning. Yeah, it's lifelong learning. And that's why Captain Anwar was based in Kuching. He always says that. Look at the future. Forget about the past. And making a difference in people's life. One person in a family graduates. He creates a ripple effect, not only in his family, to the whole community. This is what I talk about transformation, not just change. And once you are there, you're transformed. You are no more. You're already a degree holder, a master, a PhD, a whatever. Like that. Right? So this is something about change and transformation. In coaching, this is what we want to do. When we coach, transformation happens, not just change. But the transformation happens, it's more sustainable. The change is more sustainable. Just like a butterfly, a butterfly is not a change caterpillar. A butterfly is a transformed caterpillar. See, you get the drift, right? Okay. Uh, again, the comfort zone to the growth zone. Comfort zone, feel safe. You go into fear zone, learning zone, growth zone. A good coach will move people from the comfort zone to the fear zone and use coaching process to bring you to the learning zone and to the growth zone. And that's why even in the education field, lecturers, trainers who use coaching tool can make a difference in learning. Can make a difference in learning. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Forget about the past. Past is there, good to remember. Good or bad experience. Like that. Good or bad past. Lepas, lepas lah. Grateful for today, look forward and have hope for tomorrow. And that's what coaching does. I'm talking about another very important thing that we, we do. Focus on the solution. Problem talk create problem, solution talk create solution. I'm sure you all have heard this word, kan? Masalah. Ask yourself how many times in a day we use the word masalah. Boleh boh, tapi masalahnya. Eh, yang ni macam mana? Eh, beres. Okay, can be done. But the problem is, so the minute we start thinking about the problem, our mind cannot seek for the solution. So let's not talk about problem, seek for solution. So what is the difference? Solution focus, focusing on the future. Problem focus, focusing on the past. Solution focus, resources. Problem focus, looking at what we, kekurangan. Memanjang, complain about Google kekurangan. And that is what we call mentality of lack. Oh, tak nak kongsi ilmu. Kalau aku kongsi ilmu, dia lebih pandai. Come on lah. Ilmu is in abundance. If we believe in abundance mindset, we are created with abundance, we will be less stressed lah. Okay? Oh, sorry for the spelling again. What is working? Focus on what is working. Don't focus on what is not working. Focus on what presence. Don't focus on absence. Focus on what is possible. Don't focus on, on obstacles. Progress. Focus on progress. Don't focus on failure like I said today. Focus on ex ex action. Don't keep on talking and defining the problem. Just talk about complain, 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 complain. 
you will never know go, go anywhere the only thing you get is stress nothing more not progress you get stress focus on hope stop blaming everybody else for your own doings because we all have got choices but we like to blame others makes us feel safe when we blame others guess what i said to say that we we have the blaming culture is not hurting anybody else it's just hurting ourselves we are negative all the time in coaching we will not talk about problems yes i'm not saying running away from problem lah kan we accept the problem problem exists respect the problem move forward not wind down with the problem okay the trust equation when we are talking about technical people tech people they say oh yeah we need a formula for trust this is from trusted advisor how do we trust worthiness is a formula lah t is equals to credibility plus reliability plus intimacy divided by self orientation when you talk about credibility is there do you have enough competencies knowledge and skill to be credible people for you to people to respect you right reliability do you walk your talk when you say i'll be there i will provide the report by by noon you are there i promise to contact all these people you are there you are reliable cakap boleh orang kata boleh belilah you punya cakap kan because you promise you deliver what do you call you you under promise over deliver reliability lah tu intimacy means people are feeling safe sharing their feeling or emotions with you so one way okay before that self orientation means self centered everything about the earth 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 is me 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 so two ways two ways to uh increase uh trust yeah two ways to increase trust two ways to increase trust one is to increase this increase credibility okay increase credibility reliability and uh and intimacy it takes a long time lah kan in my experience lah it takes a long time because whether you got phd ka you are a double phd ka you are a master ka you are a, a fantastic technical person you are an engineer you are that you are you know all that it takes time to build trust another one you can do is to reduce self orientation while you are increasing your credibility reduce your self orientation i mean not about me i'm here to serve others So when you reduce the denominator divided by that again when you divide that your trust increase your trust increase So I just want to explain this uh about the trust now when it's nothing about yourself it's all about if we are leaders kita diamanahkan ya kita dah amanahkan untuk jaga orang lain three areas physical safety of the people that we serve to lead the mental de- development knowledge development competency development and also spiritual development of the people that we lead when i talk about spiritual is spirituality is the values of us sekali kita diamanahkan sebagai leader it's nothing about us it's all about the others yeah so when in coaching guess what is nothing about us we use the coaching process to empower others inspire others It's nothing about us it's about them getting their own goal it's about them growing and guess what you are directly applying the trust equation when you apply the trust equation trust increases when trust increases respect increases coming back to one of my teachers i'm a certified john maxwell trainer and coach Maxwell talks about the five levels of leadership. Level one, people follow because they have to lah, because you pangkat lah, because of your position lah. Number two, level two, people follow because okay lah, you're my boy, you I follow you lah. Three, level three is people fo- follow you because what you have done for the organization. Nah, that increase lah tu. Level four, people follow you because what you have done for them. You have developed them. You have taken care of them. Level four. pinnacle level 5 respect 
People follow you because of who you are and what you represent. Can you imagine if you increase trust, you increase respect, you are at level five pinnacle, leadership level, level five, the ultimate level. And how do you increase trust? Is to increase the respect. How to increase the respect is to increase your trust. Trust and respect. How do you do that? It's nothing about me. Believing your mindset, I'm here to serve others. You gain the respect. And that's how you rise up as a leader. Okay? I'm going to stop sharing here. And, okay, I still can't operate the breakout room. That's okay. So, let me tell you, okay, before we go to questions, let me tell you some solution focused stories. Lah. Cerita lah sikit, kan? Earlier, I talked about being solution focused. We don't have to have, I did a leadership retreat uh, for these people. They all are country heads of a multinational tech company. We did it in an island and uh, they were there three days leadership retreat. And one of the things, one of the leaders was talking to me from one country. He said, Sean, you need to understand my problem. I said, no, sir, I don't have to know your problem. How can you not understand my problem? How can, if you don't want to understand my problem, how can you help me? I said, no, I'm a coach. You are going to help yourself. But you need to listen to my problem. Okay, check out. Lah. After you continue, you know, my problem is this, my problem is that, my problem is this. Okay, what do you want? No, my problem is this. I said, what do you want? After three, four times, the other country leaders say, hey, can you see Shan not interested in your problem? Then he said, really Shan? I said, yes. You can talk to me for 40 days and 40 nights about your problem. I will never understand. Because I'm not in your shoes. What do you want? Then he said, what I want is I want my team leaders to work closely uh, and build a, a better team. Okay, good. That is your goal. Let us go there. So what I'm saying is, don't focus too much on the problem now. i give you another example. This was one of my participants, one of my students. It was uh, uh, Asia Pack, regional director for one of the big NGOs. And this is one of the countries. Uh, in one of the countries, uh, in um, uh, Indochina country, they wanted to provide education for children. Tapi tak jadi jadi. Bila tanya, why? Uh, again, uh, why you are not providing education for the children? Oh, because of because of you know no building, no grant, no money, no this. All focusing on the problem. But the question is, what do you want? Oh, uh, we want to provide education for children. Provide lah. So when you focus on what you want, then what happened? They converted all buildings and all houses into school they started providing. So that's another classical example of solution-focused thinking in action. So another simple, there was in this hotel in Cyber Jaya, I was doing a program. You know, dalam, uh, uh, what do you call, dalam hotel kan, dia ada lampu bulat, kan? Uh, build, uh, and then they cut screen, the light will there on top. But then the, the, when I switch off the light, it is not switching off horizontally, but vertically. Depan ke belakang. I said, I call the technician. I said, hey brother, boleh ke? I tak nak lampu ni menyala sebab screen tu tak clear. Screen kelabu. Oh, susah lah macam ni. Masalahnya, I kena tu ubah wiring lah. Oh, ni susah. Everything is susah lah. Problem centered. I, I wanted to actually teach him, inspire him to be solution focused. I said, brother, dengar betul-betul. I tak nak lampu ni menyala je. Again, rewiring. I said, no need. I tak nak lampu ni menyala. Oh, kalau macam itu, kita buka lah bulb. Ah, buka lah. Can you imagine? When he loosen the bulb, no light, screen very clear. Do we need to do rewiring? No. If we focus on the problem, then we need to rewire. If we focus on what we want, just book out, lah. book out. They got a clear screen. So in everyday life, ladies and gentlemen, let's focus on solution focus. Because when you start focusing on solutions, guess what's going to happen? We are going to be more thankful and grateful. When we are more thankful and grateful, we are well in our spirit, we are well in our mind, and our behaviors will be influenced by that. And we can get more, we can seek for more solution when we are well in the mind. Less stress, lah. Hello, where is the mind? Because why? We accept the fact and we are moving forward. Right? So, um, again, I would say that that's the end of my presentation.
ending with been solution focused. We'll get a few more questions before uh, you know we close the day. Stanley, are we okay with that? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think I will continue with the question so that we can. Uh, uh, of course, our aim is to finish on schedule at four fifteen. So yeah. I think we'll move on to the questions. The next question that we have is. Uh, how would coaching foster creativity and innovation in an organization? Okay, I just uh, ended with that note. Let's be solution focused. Lah. Bila, bila kita problem focused, we'll be our thinking and all that, and we'll be stressed. So forget about talking about what problem we have right now. Let's talk about what we want. What we want, then we can create and innovate. Don't talk about problem. And in a lot of uh, all these innovators and all that, you see them, they're always looking at what they want. They don't, they don't worry about what has happened in the past. That's how they're able to create and innovate. So coaching helps to get people to be more solution focused. Okay, yes, yeah, solution focused, all right. Focus on what, what we, the outcome, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll move on to a few. Um, uh, let's say the next question, this is about there's a lot of talk about a multi-generational workforce, people of different generations working in a company. How important is coaching in getting people to strive for excellence? There was a research done by Pricewaterhouse a few years back, a few, maybe but 10 years back, but with 4,200 were graduates from all over the world. Guess what? They prefer coaching and mentoring. They prefer their leaders to practice coaching and mentoring rather than directing them all the time. So here again, earlier I said, for the current generation, for a current generation, younger generation, let's not talk about just younger generation. Lah. Some more like empower their thinking, be inclusive, you know, and uh, and also to accept the fact that leader, I as a leader, I might not know everything. Let go, let go, and listen to people. Some of the very most difficult thing for a leader to do is to listen. Let's practice coaching. And God willing, we'll be getting people to, uh, the younger generation to really, really move forward. Okay. Yeah, you got the younger generation, are, like, like you mentioned, are our future leaders, right? We yeah. need to prepare them for the challenges. And trust them, right? Trust them. Trust them and let them go. But we, we, we are there. Like, we framework there to juggle values, uh, policy, and so on. The rest, let them go. Okay, yeah. All right, and the next question, uh, it says here, in this day and age, leaders are asked to wear many hats. And these hats are of different colors as well. Based on your experience, Chan, are mm -hmm. leaders comfortable with multiple roles, including being a coach? It's not a question of being comfortable or not being comfortable. If you're a leader, please accept that you got multiple roles to play. As you are, you're also a trainer, you're also an instructor, you're also a lecturer, you're also a consultant within internal consultant, you're also a mentor, you're also a facilitator, you're also a coach. In a lot of organizations, when it comes to this kind of areas, HR, everything directed to HR. Because HR are internal consultants giving you uh, the, the, the law of the country and all that. Every leader must be, a, they must play all these roles. Wow, some people tell me, Shan susah macam ni. Memanglah susah. Siapa cakap being a leader is easy. So we need to adapt ourselves. If that's what we believe in. If not, we will just do manager's role, nine to five. Because there's a big difference, right? Leaders inspire. Right? So if you want to be a leader, need to wear all those hats. But you need to understand what it takes so that you play the role of that particular hat well. Okay. That's true. Huh? Multiple roles to play. I think this, this uh, the next question is also related. It says, as leaders, would coaching take up too much of our time? Okay. Look, when we are doing formal coaching, yeah? when we are doing formal coaching, yes, we need to allocate time, 45 minutes, 90 minutes for the coaching session. But when leaders has got a leader, uh, coaching as a toolkit, it's an everyday thing, everyday conversation thing. Like, for example, you're walking on the, on, in your office and 
you're talking to your staff and you're saying, uh, Grace, how are you, Grace? And uh, uh, good, uh, boss, you know, everything is good, uh, you know, but the thing is, uh, uh, tell me more. I think this one uh, we should do better. Lah. Okay, what do you mean be better? That is have a, a coaching conversation. We don't have to sit down and do formal coaching as leaders because once you practice this coaching conversation, you're creating coaching culture. No, the thing is, the trouble is, every time when the staff comes to us and we give answer, we give answer, we give answer, memang niat kita nak bagi answer. But guess what? We are not allowing them to think. So in a daily, what I'm saying here, as leaders, practice coaching. There are times we need to direct. Like for example, oh, fire in the basement. Takkanlah kita nak coach kan? Oh, what do you think our goal is? Fire in the basement. Boss, we need to put out the fire. What are the options you got to put out the fire? Tak payah lah. Go and put out the fire. We'll talk about it later. So, as leaders, we need to know when to apply coaching. Once you know about coaching, coaching is not everything. Coaching is only one of the tools for leaders but a very powerful tool for leaders of the future. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so there's a very the essential uh, aspects of coaching here, the part of the daily operations as well. Yeah, yeah. Devon, uh, Sean, you might have a look at the question in the, in the, in the inbox there. We, there's something about being tight for time and then they are, uh, it's asking for a recommendation on how to balance, you know, uh, that. How to balance money? I Oh, As it, leaders, it, we are tight for time. How do we commit to being a coach and to be coached? Any recommendation on how to balance okay. it out? Uh, it's not in mine. As it may be personally sent to you, maybe. Uh, I don't see it yet. Huh? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, coaching oh. culture. As leaders, we are tight for time. How do we commit of being a coach to be coached? Any recommendation on how to balance it all? It's just that dawning that, that coaching principle. Once you know it, right is using it whenever you need it like for example just to clarify you know for example if i can say uh you know if uh who, who can i see here okay rosma for example rosma is here rosma i'm the i'm i'm rosma staff you know i said uh oh, rosma you know i need to do this and all that i'm not sure so rosma rather than just directly telling me what to do can ask me to think about what i can do because if everything the leader wants to do Guess what? The staff will not think. Everything comes to you. So you need to know when to balance. How to know when to balance? You check whether they need their point of situation need, need for content. That means need for knowledge or not. If need for knowledge, they tak tahu, give knowledge. Tapi you know that the person has got knowledge, need to make the person think, then you use coaching. So once you start practicing this, right, then you will know when to use coaching, when not to use coaching. There's a another metric called skill and will matrix, which I can relate to, but we don't have time. But I would always recommend all of you to come for our program in, in Sarawak Skills. Uh, we'll do, we have got a two days program in the future. <laughs> God willing, God willing, you know, then you can really have the coaching tools with you. I hope I made sense then. Is there a self-coaching term by Ahmad Selain? Uh, Ahmad Selain. Uh, uh, Fadalini, thank you for your question. Uh, Selahin, is there such thing as self-coaching? Yes, sir, there is. Even the GROW model too, we can use it for self-coaching. But the only thing with self-coaching, you must be highly disciplined. Nah. Sebab apa? Sometimes some questions you don't want to ask yourself. You know why? You don't like to answer that question. And that's why we get peer-to-peer. -peer. Coaching is not from boss to subordinate and all that. Even peer-to-peer. -peer. Even sometimes my staff can coach me in a conversation. Because it does not matter, right? Because it's just coaching conversation. A lot of time people feel that a coach either no hair or grey hair. Baru boleh coach. Nah, I've proven again and again. Young ones can coach. Okay. Um, thank you, Dan. Any other question? Uh, the presumption previously was that as a coach, we are supposed to sack a dedicated time to coach. This will be my takeaway. Well, Dan, Dan, you can have coaching conversation anytime. Like, you know, in, in my family, you know, during the dinner table, we have coaching session. Sometimes. I mean, coaching conversation, not, not formal coaching. You know. So how was this? Oh, you know, I was oh, angry with my staff. If my son mm -hmm. said, I was angry with my staff. Okay. Uh, what can you do to, to make it better? That's a coaching conversation. Or oh, earlier, oh, I got 40 marks in my exam. What can you do to have that increase? 
Oh, I don't know. What if you know? Who can help you to know? Make what we want is no, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very serious about this part. If we constant, constantly as leaders want to tell people, tell people, tell people, we are forgetting how to think. We will come up with generation of leaders who cannot think, who will be just following. And I always say this: Kalau sendiri tak boleh pikir, orang lain akan pikir untuk kita. Kalau dia dalam our own community tak apa, our own country tak apa. What happens if they are coming from outside and thinking for us? That is dangerous, dangerous gentlemen. And ladies, so in of in our organization, we need to constantly empower our staff to be thinking, because our neurons here. Kalau kita tak pikir, dia mah itu yang selalu keluar. Ayah saya malas nak pikir lah. Ayah lazy to think lah. Ayah lah forever waiting for people to give you ideas. And then kalau tak jadi, complain the boss because the boss gave you instruction. So this is very good. Yes. Yeah, we got to everyone put on our thinking caps. I suppose a very important part. Yes, yes, yes. Um, they want uh, this next question. I, I think we have a time for. We still have time for a few more. Uh, mm. Is your opinion, uh, Shan? How do you impress on leaders that coaching is an important pillar of leadership based on your experience? Because sometimes leaders may not understand the need for coaching. Mm. All these years. My experience is, I don't tell them, I don't impose, I let them experience. I invite all of you all to experience. And I, for, for more, you know, like my discussion with Sarawak Skills, is not only giving the training, but also to collect data to measure the outcome of the training. That's what Sarawak Skills and we, Team Coach, is all about. We just don't want to give you a program. We want to measure it. We want to see how the outcome. Only then people can be convinced or convicted that coaching is good. Kalau tidak, setakat cakap ni, letih. If they don't experience, adult learning macam tu, adults macam tu. They need to experience, okay, I think this is good for me. If you just talk only, nothing will happen. So my experience, Stanley, is I invite all of the leaders to experience coaching. Ah, I think that's how that relates to just now you talk, spoke about experiential learning and all that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Ah. All right, I'll move on to the next one. Uh, it says a recurring challenge in organizations is that we don't have a critical mass of talented people. What's the role of coaching in talent development? They, they don't have a, enough talented people, it seems. Okay. In talent development, kan, uh, there are the two things. Lah. One is to see the gap, where the gap is. And those who are in L&D field, you all know about need analysis as well. Yeah looking at the gap and then looking at what is the intervention that is most suitable whether directive intervention or enabling intervention enabling intervention like facilitation and coaching meaning that person has already got knowledge and i've got the I have the motivational factor we call it the will and also the skill then we can use coaching but if we find the gap is knowledge and they need to be sent for training sent for training lah. fuji xerox a multinational company did a research when they conduct training combined with coaching it accelerates the learning and talent development so after a program not only you know, focusing on that that knowledge thingy applying and all that but also to coach to sustain the application of the learning and if possible to measure the outcome lah. so and that's how talent development work not again Coaching is not for everything, but coaching definitely is an important tool to be, uh, to, which will add value to talent development. True, true. Coaching adds value. Yes, that's indeed. And uh, even an organization, sometimes when we are called to, when, when they ask me and they, we, they want to contract us for coaching, they contract us for the talent people. They got talent pools, so they hire coaches for the talents, for them to move forward. Young, not so talented, meaning they're not, if their knowledge and skills are there, uh, those people are sent for training. You need a okay, you need a talent pool, they, they, we enhance their talent by giving them coaching. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I move on to the next one. I think the, we are down to the last two questions. So I think we will just finish off with these last two questions. Sure. Just now, uh, Shan, you spoke about VUCA, you mm. know, the volatile world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the rules of competition are, are being re rewritten even as we speak. 
So from a coaching perspective, as leaders, what can we do to ensure that our organizations are able to thrive, not just merely you know, survive in this world? So we want something more like how to thrive in this VUCA world. So where does coaching come in, actually? Okay. Thriving, huh? Okay. I think in, in, in time to uncertainty, we need to accept the fact as leaders, we also do not know what's going to happen. Even organization might not know what to do, how to do and all that. So what happens when we start having coaching conversations, right? We are exploring the possibilities. We are exploring the possibilities. We are unleashing potential of people. You will be surprised. The most quietest person in your, in your organization, suddenly will have great ideas who can contribute to the current situation. So coaching, being an inclusive tool, helps us to thrive in this uh, uncertain situation. So give everybody the respect that you know, we all are created in this world. I believe God has created all of us with special talents. And as coaching leaders, we can unleash the potential talents from our people that whom we serve to lead. Okay, yes, yes. All right. So I'll move on to the last question in the interest of time. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, in the global environment, there is much talk about the need to have a highly collaborative culture and shared accountability. How does leadership and specifically coaching fit in? Create a coaching culture. That's it. Create a coach, uh, coaching culture. Create a coaching culture. How do we do that? We get, I mean, of course, knowledge and skills, content input, how to use coaching. Uh, large organizations, what we have done, we have created, uh, we have created uh, in-house, uh, in-house certified professional coaches, in-house. And every leader, at least go for you know uh, coach training so that they can at least have not all of them have to be certified just knowledge to have the tools and once you have all that you're actually creating a coaching culture what is the benefits of coaching culture which i said earlier transparency trust is respect people have more clarity people understand where we are going people have common goals people are willing to share people are willing to you know human beings are human beings all of them if you give them an opportunity they want to share in the development of any organization. But are we leaders respecting every individual, wherever they are, wherever they, they are, you know, to get the ideas from them. And that is only by being an empowering leader. You can get that from them. Okay, yeah, that's a very interesting, being an empowering leader. Just now, I also enjoyed that part you spoke about that there, there, there is a need for us to be servant leaders as well. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, we are here to serve uh, for not only for the good of uh, the individuals, but for our organization as well. So I think that's, that's how you nicely summarize that. Well, uh, Shan, can I just make a little comment before uh, we move on? Yeah, just uh, thank you so much. I know you have uh, uh, spoken for quite some time, uh, uh, managed to answer all the questions. Um, what I, If I just summarize it in a couple of words, I think today you gave a high octane presentation. I've never seen so much energy in such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, your wonderful insight, Shan, will go a long way to facilitate the ongoing quest by the leaders, I think, to, bo to boost their arsenal of skills and to stay on top of the heap. Huh? Nowadays, we're talking about competition, how to stay ahead of the pack and you know, all that. So I think it looks like coaching is one of the ways and a very important way. And like you highlighted just now, even the younger generation or the current generation based on surveys, they, they, they actually relish the code to be coached instead of being directed or told what to do. I think gone are the days when a leader used to say jump and you ask how high shall I jump? There's no <laughs> such thing already, right? Yeah, so we're talking here about uh, people getting more involved uh, being part of the decision-making process and there is a sense of belonging as well. So thank you very much uh, for that, Chan. So um, would you like to make any closing remarks? I know, I know you have shared a lot, but uh, before, we, before I go to the concluding segment, would you like to share something by way of closing? I think it's about purpose. If I could share, see all of us, you know, to, to really understand our purpose, there is, there is no accident we are here. There is no coincidence that we are created here. 
that's why when I talk about purpose, when we ask our what's our purpose, we don't have to go very deep philosophical conversation about purpose. It's all about asking ourselves, how do others believe? And how do others benefit from our existence? Let it be an organization, community, family, or individual, especially individual. Saya sebagai pemimpin ni, how other people untung lah dengan keujudan saya. That means if anybody, if there's nobody benefiting, I don't think why should we be here? And I don't think we are here to habiskan beras or occupy space in this world. There is a role that we play. And if we can discover that, I think it will be a wonderful place, a blessed place for every one of us. So I just wish that and everyone to find out how other people are benefiting and let's serve them. And coaching is one of the best tools to enhance your servant leadership competencies. Thank you, Stanley. And thank you all. Yes, thank you so much, Sean. Yes, all of us have a purpose. Uh, and we just need to discover or rather unearth, unearth our talents yeah, so that we can progress and facilitate progress for not only for ourselves, but for our fellow human beings. Indeed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your support and presence today. For your reference, our next industry talk on will be on cyber security on the 6th of May. Of course, we'll keep everyone posted on that. And look out also for our two-day leaders as coaches program and certified professional coaches program, will be who, which will be, that will be facilitated by Captain uh, Dr. Shan. So uh, we'll be also forwarding to you guys details on that. So anybody would like to join, we can follow up, uh, can follow up with us. And of course, we'll be spreading the news uh, to all our members as well, as well as those from the government, as well as from the industry. So before we conclude, I would like to ev uh, invite everyone to scan the QR code. Uh, it's either on your screen or there's a link in the chat room. I can see in the chat room. Please uh, take the time to fill our evaluation form. We really welcome your feedback. And as highlighted by uh, Shan just now, uh, following, of course, after the, this session, we will compile uh, not only the PowerPoint slides, of course, uh, our team will email to all participants. So uh, we will work together on this. We hope that uh, you have given us your email address you can also contact us. Eh? I think uh, our admin team has uh, all your particulars. So, so thank you very much for your time this afternoon. We look forward to your participation and support at future sessions, right? And have the, the rest uh, on, for the rest of the day, you know, have a wonderful day and a pleasant evening. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much.